In economics, general equilibrium theory attempts to explain the behavior of supply, demand, and prices in a whole economy with several or many interacting markets. By seeking to prove that a set of prices exists that will result in an overall equilibrium, general equilibrium theory contrasts to the theory of partial equilibrium, which only analyzes single markets. General equilibrium theory both studies economies using the model of equilibrium pricing and seeks to determine in which circumstances the assumptions of general equilibrium will hold. The theory dates to the 1870s, particularly the work of French economist Elie Acuto and Walras in his pioneering 1874 work Elements of Pure Economics. Overview. It is often assumed that agents are price takers, and under that assumption two common notions of equilibrium exist. Walrusian equilibrium, and its generalization, a price equilibrium with transfers. Broadly speaking, general equilibrium tries to give an understanding of the whole economy using bottom-up approach, starting with individual markets and agents. Macroeconomics, as developed by the Keynesian economists, focused on the top-down approach, where the analysis starts with larger aggregates, the big picture. Therefore, general equilibrium theory has traditionally been classified as part of microeconomics. The difference is not as clear as it used to be, since much of modern macroeconomics has emphasized microeconomic foundations and has constructed general equilibrium models of macroeconomic fluctuations. General equilibrium macroeconomic models usually have a simplified structure that only incorporates a few markets, like a goods market and a financial market. In contrast, general equilibrium models in the microeconomic tradition typically involve a multitude of different goods markets. They are usually complex and require computers to help with numerical solutions. In a market system the prices and production of all goods, including the price of money and interest, are interrelated. A change in the price of one good, say bread, may affect another price, such as baker's wages. If bakers differ in tastes from others, the demand for bread might be affected by a change in baker's wages with a consequent effect on the price of bread. Calculating the equilibrium price of just one good, in theory, requires an analysis that accounts for all of the millions of different goods that are available. The first attempt in neoclassical economics to model prices for a whole economy was made by Elia Cuto and Walras. Walrus Elements of Pure Economics provides a succession of models, each taking into account more aspects of a real economy. Some think Walrus was unsuccessful and that the later models in this series are inconsistent. In particular, Walrus's model was a long-run model in which prices of capital goods are the same whether they appear as inputs or outputs and in which the same rate of profits is earned in all lines of industry. This is inconsistent with the quantities of capital goods being taken as data. But when Walras introduced capital goods in his later models, he took their quantities as given in arbitrary ratios. Walras was the first to lay down a research program much followed by 20th century economists. In particular, the Walrusian agenda included the investigation of when equilibria are unique and stable. Walras also proposed a dynamic process by which general equilibrium might be reached, that of the tatonment or groping process. The tatonment process is a model for investigating stability of equilibria. Prices are announced, and agents state how much of each good they would like to offer or purchase. No transactions and no production take place at disequilibrium prices. Instead, prices are lowered for goods with positive prices and excess supply. Prices are raised for goods with excess demand. The question for the mathematician is under what conditions such a process will terminate in equilibrium where demand equates to supply for goods with positive prices and demand does not exceed supply for goods with a price of zero. Walras was not able to provide a definitive answer to this question. 
In partial equilibrium analysis, the determination of the price of a good is simplified by just looking at the price of one good, and assuming that the prices of all other goods remain constant. The Marshallian theory of supply and demand is an example of partial equilibrium analysis. Partial equilibrium analysis is adequate when the first order effects of a shift in the demand curve do not shift the supply curve. Anglo American economists became more interested in general equilibrium in the late 1920s and 1930s after Piero Sraffa's demonstration that Marshallian economists cannot account for the forces thought to account for the upward slope of the supply curve for a consumer good. If an industry uses little of a factor of production, a small increase in the output of that industry will not bid the price of that factor up. To a first-order approximation, firms in the industry will experience constant costs, and the industry supply curves will not slope up. If an industry uses an appreciable amount of that factor of production, an increase in the output of that industry will exhibit increasing costs. But such a factor is likely to be used in substitutes for the industry's product and an increased price of that factor will have effects on the supply of those substitutes. Consequently, Straffer argued, the first-order effects of a shift in the demand curve of the original industry under these assumptions includes a shift in the supply curve of substitutes for that industry's product, and consequent shifts in the original industry's supply curve. General equilibrium is designed to investigate such interactions between markets. Continental European economists made important advances in the 1930s. Walrus proofs of the existence of general equilibrium often were based on the counting of equations and variables. Such arguments are inadequate for nonlinear systems of equations and do not imply that equilibrium prices and quantities cannot be negative, a meaningless solution for his models. The replacement of certain equations by inequalities and the use of more rigorous mathematics improve general equilibrium modeling. Modern concept of general equilibrium in economics The modern conception of general equilibrium is provided by a model developed jointly by Kenneth Arrow, Gerard Debreu, and Lionel W. Mackenzie in the 1950s. Debreu presents this model in theory of value as an axiomatic model, following the style of mathematics promoted by Nicholas Bourbaki. In such an approach, the interpretation of the terms in the theory are not fixed by the axioms. Three important interpretations of the terms of the theory have been often cited. First, suppose commodities are distinguished by the location where they are delivered. Then the arrow debu model is a spatial model of, for example, international trade. Second, suppose commodities are distinguished by when they are delivered. That is, suppose all markets equilibrate at some initial instant of time. Agents in the model purchase and sell contracts, where a contract specifies, for example, a good to be delivered and the date at which it is to be delivered. The arrow debu model of intertemporal equilibrium contains forward markets for all goods at all dates. No markets exist at any future dates. Third, suppose contracts specify states of nature which affect whether a commodity is to be delivered. A contract for the transfer of a commodity now specifies, in addition to its physical properties, its location and its date, an event on the occurrence of which the transfer is conditional. This new definition of a commodity allows one to obtain a theory of risk-free from any probability concept. These interpretations can be combined. So the complete arrow debut model can be said to apply when goods are identified by when they are to be delivered, where they are to be delivered and under what circumstances they are to be delivered, as well as their intrinsic nature. So there would be a complete set of prices for contracts such as one ton of winter red wheat, delivered on 3rd of January in Minneapolis. If there is a hurricane in Florida during December, a general equilibrium model with completer markets of this sort seems to be a long way from describing the workings of real economies. However, its proponents argue that it is still useful as a simplified guide as to how a real economies function.
Some of the recent work in general equilibrium has in fact explored the implications of incomplete markets, which is to say an intertemporal economy with uncertainty, where there do not exist sufficiently detailed contracts that would allow agents to fully allocate their consumption and resources through time. While it has been shown that such economies will generally still have an equilibrium, the outcome may no longer be Pareto optimal. The basic intuition for this result is that if consumers lack adequate means to transfer their wealth from one time period to another in the future, is risky. There is nothing to necessarily tie any price ratio down to the relevant marginal rate of substitution, which is the standard requirement for Pareto optimality. Under some conditions the economy may still be constrained Pareto optimal, meaning that a central authority limited to the same type and number of contracts as the individual agents may not be able to improve upon the outcome. What is needed is the introduction of a full set of possible contracts. Hence, one implication of the theory of incomplete markets is that inefficiency may be a result of underdeveloped financial institutions or credit constraints faced by some members of the public. Research still continues in this area.